name is Tasha Points, and for today's topic, one area that I can see clearly in now that I couldn't really navigate even two years ago is the importance of mentorship. Um, in my life, mentorship has always been an important thing, but now I realize that it is essential. Like having godly mentorship is essential. It's not optional. It's not recommended. It you, you need it. Um, for me, my biggest mentors in my life are my parents. And I'm very thankful that I have that closest with them, that I can come to them with anything, that I can talk to them about anything, and they can be honest with me because I really want to grow. Um, even this week, I, you know, this week was really rough for me. Um, I'm dealing with new um, medical things. I'm dealing with a new schedule, um, dealing with some hardships in different areas of my life. And I came to my mom and I told her about it. I was like, mommy, you know, I'm just really struggling. Like, I, I feel like I've done, like I've been busier before. I've done a lot more, but my body just can't handle what it used to handle. Like, I, I don't understand what's wrong. And she just told me, she was like, baby, you're going to cut something out. Like, you're going to take something off of your plate. And I know that's not necessarily what I wanted to hear because I was casting the show at school, but I realized that she was right. You know, like the biggest thing for me is stewarding what God has given me well. And if something gets in the way of that, then it needs to be removed. And with how my life was going um, with doing the show, it just, it wasn't the time for me. It wasn't the best decision for my life and I was not able to steward what God has given me well. And so I'm so thankful that because of mentorship, it's taught me how to choose friends and community that is an asset instead of a liability as well. Um, that mentorship, whether it's from my parents or from pastors in the church, from couples in the church, um, from people on my job, whatever it is, um, whoever it is for you, like, I just, I pray, my hope and prayer for you guys is that you have that mentorship in your life or that you find it and that you uh, see the importance in it. Because mentorship, um, one of the biggest Bible verses that I use during this time in my life is Proverbs 27, 17. And it says, iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another. Meaning that we are supposed, you know, we need each other. In this life that we're walking, we need each other. We need um, that accountability. We need to tell someone, hey, like I'm praying about this, but I don't know how to get through it. Have you been through this? Can you please help me out? Um, I think that's the most beautiful part about how we were made is that we're social beings and that, you know, we can help each other more than we even think. And God uses us all in mysterious ways. So again, my name is Stacia Points and one area that <laughs> I now see clearly in is the importance of mentorship. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jeremiah Turner, and today I'm going to be talking about the love of family. One thing that my parents always told me is that no matter what, your family will always be there for you. And time in and time out, through the stressful times, through the rough times, my family has always been there to show me that they support me and that they love me. Living away from home, it's been hard to feel the reassurance to know that everything is gonna be okay and that I can get through it. But my parents and my siblings have tried their absolute best to let me know that they support me and that they're here for me. One thing is that my parents have made this weekly thing to where we'll get on a family call and we'll talk about our week and what's going on. Um, we'll talk about things going on in our lives and then we'll have a family prayer to where we'll pray about those things. And it just makes me know that everything's gonna be okay. I remember one time I was stressing about a project that I had to get done and my family, my parents called me randomly. I didn't tell them, I didn't tell them about it before, but they just called me and they were like, hey, is everything okay? 
let me know if you need anything. And that was that reassurance just gave me more drive and motivation to get through it. And they let me know that they had my back and they were going to support me. I remember during last semester, I had an episode where I was confused on what I really wanted to do with life. And I remember talking to my parents and talking to my siblings. And they let me know that no matter what, they'll always support me and that it's okay to, to feel stressed, but they let me know that they had my back and that I was gonna get through it. And they helped me get through it. These calls that we have every week have really been an important phase on my life because it allows me to let them, to update them on how I feel and praying about it just makes it feel so much better. And one scripture that I've always been told and that I will carry on with me is Philippians 4.13, which says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My parents raised uh, my me and my siblings to and get it in our head basically to know that we can do it no matter what happens. And anytime something stressful was happening, I remember that I can do all things. My parents are always there for me. And I know I have my siblings that are always there for me as well. My name is Jeremiah Turner, and I thank God for the ability for the ability to see more clearly when it comes to the love of family. I also thank God that he's blessed me with such an amazing caring and loving family that I know supports me and that will always be there for me. And I, and I want you guys to know that no matter what, you will always have your family there for you. Through the hard times, through the happy times, they'll be there, they'll carry you through it. They'll be there to congratulate you and support you when, when you get through your mission. And none of that is possible without God. God puts people in our lives puts our family in our lives for a reason because they're supposed to be there for us and they're our main unit that just motivates you and pushes you to be happy, do what you want to do in life and have a great time. So I thank you for listening to me and I hope that we can all look at our family and see loving people that will always support us and be there for us and care for us. Hey guys, what's up? It's Arion, and I just want to come to you with a quick message about choosing the right friends and knowing how to do that and how and why it's great to have those right friends with you. So when it comes to choosing the right friends, you can't just claim any and everybody as your friend. You need those people who will be able to guide you, support you, help you, help you grow in areas that you didn't think you needed to grow in your life. You know, and choosing those friends also can better better you as a person and show you love in a different type of way than you receive from other people it also choosing those who are followers of christ can really guide you i once i got here to college you know the first year was a little rough i didn't have that many friends here all my friends are back home but once i started you know branching out a little bit i ended up finding this campus ministry and that's where i found most of my friends that i have now here at college and those i've realized now that those people have really guided me in a way that I never thought I could be guided by people my age, who I call friends, and now I call sisters and brothers. They, if I'm going through something, they are willing to pray with me. They're willing to guide me and give me the right kind of advice. Not advice coming from a place of hate or evil or none of that. It comes from a place of, we're trying to be more like Christ. So let's think in the mindset of, we need to be guided by Christ and see what would Jesus do in this situation. So having those type of friends around me helps me become a better person, not only because I have people who are praying for me and willing to help me, but it's showing me how I can also become one of those friends to other people. Why showing that kind of love they show me, I can show the love back to them or reciprocate to those who maybe don't have a relationship with God or maybe who are looking for God. They can find that within me because I have been fed by those who are who I call my friend and who are willing to help me in times of need. And so before, you know, I was blind to how much a friendship can really shape you as a person who real who you decide to surround yourself with it can really shape your reputation how you view things your mindset 
how you act, how you treat others, all that can really come from who you surround yourself with. And I didn't know that when I was younger. I'm not saying I had the worst friends when I was younger. I had great friends, but it still wasn't the type of friends that I needed to be able to grow to where I am today. And so finding those friends in the ministry that I attend in college, it's really shown me how having those type of people in your life can really shape who you are. And having those people who are also young and my age who are followers of Christ and openly followers who really want to who really want to grow with him and learn his love and learn his word and be able to live a life according to him really helped me as a person, helped me grow in my walking relationship with God. So finding those right people really can help you and it's really beneficial. So look out for that. Everybody's not going to be your friend. It's just the sad truth of the world. It's unfortunate, but I mean, hey, it is what it is. Having those right people in your circle, finding those people will help you in the long run. It may take some time. You may have some times where it's just you. And hey, if God has you just by yourself for a while, God's going to have you by yourself for a while for a reason. But it's isolating you for a reason to be able to find those people. Because I was isolated for a long time before I ended up finding those group of friends that I could call my brothers and sisters who I know I can go to if I have trouble, who I know will really pray for me and look for guidance and look for those scriptures to help me find what I need, not just from them, but also from God, seeing because God will speak through them and God will guide them to help me. And now I know I can listen to God and I can look for those scriptures and I can pray for people because they've done it for me. That love was shown to me. I can now show that love to others. And hopefully those others can show it to others. So, yeah, finding the right friends will really help you through life. So be on the lookout for those people who are willing to be there for you, to be that light when you're in the dark, you know? Finding those people will forever just be what you need in life. I love you guys. I'll see you guys around. Hi, my name is Nehemiah Turner, and today's question is, What can I see now that I could not see before? Well, I can now see the value of time. Over the past few years, especially being in college, I have dealt with learning how to distribute my time to different people, people, places, and sources. Well, freshman year and sophomore year, especially being a music major, I had a lot of classes, uh, groups I had to perform with, assignments, exams, and music to produce. I've always had a problem with saying no, which allowed for my timetable to be filled up all the time. And I never really had time to do the things I loved or the things that were important to me. I I would stay up late at night with friends, hanging out. I'd go out when I knew I had to study. I wouldn't do my assignments on time. And then I wait to the last second till I saw a little exclamation mark and said, do midnight. And then say no to everybody and for the last few hours, buckle down and do all my work. I realized that this gave me a lot of stress and anxiety and that this was not healthy. Over the, over the past couple years and having so many classes, I've had to realize that sometimes you have to say no to people. Sometimes a lot of people ask me to do certain products for them and I want to say yes just because I want the experience or I think it's a great opportunity but I realized that I only have so much time now. I realized that I don't have time to do everything that I want to do, but I need to manage my time. Therefore, I will be able to do everything that needs to be done. A scripture that has helped me with this is Psalms 90, 12. It says, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Now, most people take time for granted and they think, 24 hours is a lot of time in a day. And it feels like a lot, but when you have a lot of things to do and a lot of assignments that you have to turn in and projects you have to get done, you realize that 24 hours is only so much. I think I didn't value time as much as I did just because I thought I had so much of it. And I thought there would always be time to get my assignments done if I had fun now. So I have to learn how to stop staying up late at night and learn how to not always be on the game and get my assignments done first and everything that needs to be done first, get it done quickly and efficiently so that 
it would, I would, it would allow me time to do things that I like to do or extracurricular activities. I realized that, especially in being in college, every, everything that I'm asked to do isn't always what needs to be done. And if I make my time right, then I will be able to be more healthy to myself and more good to myself. Once again, my name is Nehemiah Turner. I thank God for the ability to see more clearly when it comes to time. And I hope that in the future, I can always progress and get better with managing my time because my parents always told me that time is of the essence. There's a time and place for everything. And not taking time for granted is something that I'm working on every day and is allowing me to be a better person. Do I have it perfect? Probably not. But progressing each and every day and just accepting the fact that there's only so much time will help me to just do better in life. My name is Olivia Scott. Today's question is, what can I see now that I could not see before? And I can now see the importance of trusting God to lead you in the right direction. The importance of trusting God really helps me with my decision to attend Mercy University. At first, I did not want to go. Things were not going as planned. I was scared to leave home. I was scared of the possibility of not succeeding in my classes. And overall, I was afraid of the unknown. But once I let go of fear and doubt and stopped focusing on the negative and asked God to lead my path, doors started opening up to me right away. As a freshman, I accomplished things that many first year students would not normally strive for. But now going into my third year of college, I am living in my own apartment. I am a resident assistant. I'm a Mercer Ambassador and Mercer Social Media Ambassador. I have been involved in many theater productions. I'm in a National Honor Society, and I've made the Dean's List every semester thus far. If I continued to be as fearful as I was in the beginning, I would have never got the blessings that God had in store for me. Things may not always seem perfect at first, but God will always reveal His perfect plan for you when you trust Him. A scripture that helps me was Joshua 1.9. It says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and be courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I apply this scripture in everyday life because we all go through things that are unknown and frightening. But we all get through it with faith and trust in God. And if you go to Him and ask Him for guidance, he will never lead you astray. And if you put him first, nothing is unattainable. My name is Olivia Scott, and I thank God for the ability to see more clearly when it comes to letting go and trusting him. Do I have a nail? Absolutely not. My faith is still tested at times. But Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, Submit to him and he will make your path straight. Be blessed.